Hey guys, yeah. we are on today with Lindsay Beasley and her husband, Frank, is the head coach at George Mason University. Hey, Lindsay. Hi. Okay, so can you walk me through how you and uh, Frank met? Um, sure. So we both um, went to school at Bloomsburg University in Pennsylvania. Um, Frank wrestled there. Um, we kind of only met because of that. We didn't meet at school. Um, Frank was actually um, a camp counselor for my brother and um, his his high school rival. Uh, they were rooming together at a camp, and Frank was their counselor. And my brother's roommate was like, hey, do you know Matt has a sister that goes to Bloomsburg, too? <laughs> and so... Um, that camp was about two weeks before my sophomore year started at Bloom, and so we connected on instant messenger, I think, AIM, and then <laughs> yeah. met when we got back to school. So That is awesome. And that so, was in 2005, so <laughs> here oh, we are. Wow. That's awesome. So you um, mentioned your brother. Did your brother wrestle? Yes, um, he wrestled for um, he wrestled at Bloomsburg for his redshirt year, and then he transferred to the University of Virginia. He was their twenty five pounder um, for several years. He graduated in twenty thirteen. Oh, that's awesome! So you kind of did you? I'm assuming you grew up in wrestling then. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, Matt started wrestling when he was five, four or five. Um, so I was a wrestling sister long before I was a wrestling wife. <laughs> I love that. That is awesome. Um, what was one of your favorite memories growing up with your uh, brother wrestling? Um, there were a lot. Um, so my brother had a bone marrow transplant when he was three years old. So his ability to even be here today, let alone have been a division one wrestler, um, is very special all on its own. But, um, I think a couple of my favorite, one of my favorite memories of him, um, was when he made it to the state finals, um, in high school, he, he was a runner up. Um, and then his senior year of college, I was actually, um, the photographer for, um, NC state at the time. Uh, for for that year, so I got to be on the floor watching him wrestle, and and he was in the blood round, and he he actually ended up in the blood round against his rival from Virginia Tech, and and didn't win. Um, but just being on the floor and having that experience kind of with him that year was really special. That's awesome. I cannot even imagine being on the floor and at the NCAA tournament while my brother was wrestling, was it hard for you <laughs> to, to like contain your It was emotions? very difficult. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can imagine. It was. Oh man. That's, that <laughs> is a cool memory though. So you mentioned um, NC state, which leads into my next question. What was one of the biggest changes that you saw in Frank, um, from an assistant coach to a head coach. And I realized um, the last two years at NC State, he was the associate head coach. But kind of what was the biggest mm -hmm. difference in, in him? Um, so I think fortunately for him, um, he was kind of given exposure to all areas of being a wrestling coach when we were at NC State, Pat was very good at, at you know, mentoring and um, training and being a, a, a great leader in that regard. Um, but definitely one of the biggest transitions um, to being a head coach in his own right has just kind of been the ability to delegate. Um, you know, he's a doer and he will do it all. And so when we um, came up here to George Mason, I, I've said, and I continue to say, you know, like, it's okay to delegate this. Like, you don't have to do everything. Um, 
so that part of it, and, and he's gotten significantly better at that. And, um, and then the other side of it is just alumni networking and, um, you know, just constantly building those relationships and being in those conversations. Absolutely. Um, was, was it a difficult transaction or transition, sorry, for you guys, um, having the, uh, more responsibility, um, on your plate as far as like going from coaching stuff to family, personal stuff, was that a a hard transition or did he Um, kind of go into that easy? No, not really. Um, we're kind of, we've kind of always been all in as a family, you know, when we were at NC State and even before that at Binghamton and Buffalo, um, we, we've always kind of been all in on on wrestling. Um, so having team dinners and being out with recruits and, and, you know, the whole nine yards, that's really never changed. Um, and even now to being a head coach, I mean, we still – it's kind of a family, it's a family business, you know? So, yeah. um, and, and my kids love it and the team loves them and it's, it's good. So no, there, there's really not been a difficult transition in that regard. I love that you use the word family and said that we are a wrestling family that um, gives me a lot of insight. So what kind of role or dynamic do you play with the wrestlers? Um, I don't know. I, I, I I don't know how to answer that, but I mean, I am always very open to, um, team dinners and having, you know, hosting dinner here if we have several recruits and their families in town, because, um, you know, if we were to separate our life from wrestling, we would never see Frank. So, I mean, (laughs) we kind of are. And I love it. I, I mean, if I had grown up as, I don't know, I'm not trying to bash other sports, but if I had grown up like a basketball, in a basketball family or whatever, like I may have a harder time adapting to like the way wrestling does things. But Frank's always been very big on, you know, if you come to wrestle for me, you're joining our family. You know, Frank's coaches are part of our extended family. Like it's just, I'm happy to have anybody at our house at any time. I the, love that. You know, the more the merrier. <laughs> yeah, I like that. That's um, got to be a, a very positive aspect of y'all's program when it comes to recruiting, being like, hey, it, it's a family here. Yeah, and it definitely is. That's extremely important um, to Frank and to me. You know, I, I used to know a lot more about recruits before they became athletes on his team. And when we had Franklin, I was like, something's got to give. I can't, I don't, you know, so he'll, now he'll talk to me about recruits and I'm like, I'm sorry. Like I, <laughs> I can know the guys on the team, but I can't really remember all the recruits anymore. No, I, um, but yeah, that. it's very important that like when we go into a wrestling to, to a duel or if we walk into practice, like I need to be able to know their names and I need to know that, they feel comfortable around me and, and the kids and, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. I like the, um, I think an appropriate word for that is a family culture. Yeah. And I like sure. that. I'm sorry. So what has been one of the biggest differences between Raleigh, North Carolina and Fairfax, Virginia? And it doesn't have to be a wrestling difference. It can be a generalization. <laughs> traffic (laughs) um no but um it's definitely I mean Raleigh is you know in the heartland in the south you know everyone is just I I don't know I, I feel like up here everyone's a little more you know keeps themselves a little bit more is a little bit busier you know it's definitely a faster pace here Mm-hmm. lifestyle wise um but um i am I, I enjoyed our time in north carolina i am not a southerner <laughs> i am happy that it is much cooler here <laughs> and um i actually i grew up in central pennsylvania near um about 30 minutes from penn state so we are 
significantly closer to my parents now. Um, so that is by far the the best part of, Absolutely. of the move, um, for sure. And there's, you know, there's a lot to do here for our, our kids, just historically speaking, you know, we can hop on the metro and go down and visit a museum. Well, not right now, but, you know, in normal time. Normally. <laughs> we can do that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, how how ha- has it been for you over the years juggling being a mom and being, you know, a coach's wife? Um, well, Fortunately, I picked a pretty transient career path, um, so I'm an accountant, and so transitioning from place to place with Frank hasn't been terribly difficult for me. Um, everybody needs an accountant in one way or another, and um, before before we had Franklin, I, I worked in public accounting, um, and so that was it was easy to move around from place to place back then. And then when we went to NC state, I I also worked at NC state and had a phenomenal job there. And when I had Franklin, it was, you know, my boss was a mom and our director was a mom. And so I've just been very lucky. And now I have this just complete unicorn job working for women and people who, who get it, that there's something more to life than working. Mm -hmm. Um, and now that we have Franklin and Anna, you know, the, I I work 30 hours a week. I work, well, all day from home now, but usually three days from home and two week, two days in the city. Um, but I put Franklin on the bus in the morning. I pick him up off the bus in the afternoon. You know, we go to all the home duels. It, it just, you know, we, we make it work um, because I won't sacrifice family time for my job. Um, if, if I can avoid it at all costs, um, we, and, and wrestling is our, is what we do. So Mm -hmm. (laughs) that's awesome. Talk about, you were right with that wording of the unicorn job. What a blessing to have. Oh, it is. It's a complete unicorn. (laughs) (laughs) I love it, man. That is awesome. So I saw a little bit where Franklin, your oldest wrestled, do you think that Anna will pick up wrestling too? Maybe. Um, (laughs) We are kind of, so we have always, you know, we discussed, we would never push our kids into any sport whatsoever. Um, And especially wrestling, you know, we never suggested it to Franklin. They're like, he can come to us when he's ready. He can't, we can't push him into it. He can't hate it. This is our life. This is what we do. Um, and last year, one of our really good friends, um, has a club here in, in Northern Virginia. And he asked Franklin if he wanted to come and wrestle and he said, yes. And Frank and I were like, okay, (laughs) um, but you don't have to, if you don't want to, you know, if you're not ready yet, it's fine. Um, and so he does a little bit, he hasn't actually competed yet. He just, um, the program that he just finished before we went under lockdown, um, was very basic, you know, technique and, and body awareness and just kind of like getting used to listening to a coach and, and that sort of thing. And, and Anna, she's a wrestling sister. She goes to his practices and she watches and sometimes she tries to participate. So I, I don't know. Um, the club actually started a, a program called Lady Hammers um, last year. So when she gets a little bit older, if she wants to, she can become a Lady Hammer and wrestle right alongside Franklin. But uh, And if Franklin comes to us someday and says he wants to play basketball, okay, fine. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, whatever they want to do. I, uh, I like that you – mention that it's you you guys don't want to push them into it because it's your life and you don't want them to resent or hate the sport I think that's definitely yeah. a, a huge balance to find when you're uh, submerged in the wrestling world uh, the way that a coach's wife and a coach's family is um, trying to find that balance I can imagine when having kids has got to be a little um, tricky to navigate yeah and I uh, love the name but, of the ladies' club, Lady Hammers. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's adorable. Uh, but Franklin, for now, he loves it, and he he loves to. He actually sits on the bench um, at our home matches, and you know, he his dad told him he had to dress NCAA compliant if he wanted to sit on the bench. So he dresses up and he sits on the bench and coaches and. Oh, and that's for now, so cute. that and his, his hammer practices, that's kind of where we are. <laughs> I love that he sits on the bench dressed up. That is so adorable. Does he yeah, get he, excited he during it. the and matches, too? Oh, yeah. He'll, like, it, I, I'll, I'll have to send you some a couple of pictures. He'll, he'll get right down, like, if Frank's kneeling or coaching or I'll get right down and sit next to him and kneel and, you know, after the match, he'll, he'll be on the way home and he'll talk and say, you know, well, if so-and-so, you know, he did this really well and he wrestled really hard and yeah, he gets very into it. Oh, that is adorable. I love it. He's like his dad's shadow. That is too precious. Yes. 100%. That, that is great. So what is something about Frank that most people, People do not know. Oh, man. Hmm. What do you think? Well, one thing about Frank that people, that a lot of people used to know is that he was very addicted to soda, and he is almost two years free of soda, which is something maybe a lot of people don't know, that I finally got him to quit soda. Man, um, that's hard. But in, in all... Yeah. <laughs> no, in, in all seriousness, he's um, he's awesome for as busy as he is. He helps out around the house, you know, more than I think is stereotypically expected from from a dad you know we both have full-time jobs and well I mean that's right 75 percent job but um we both are working and he does just as much in terms of maintaining our house and playing with the kids and entertaining you know it's it's a very balanced environment he's been up late the last several nights like doing all the laundry I don't know if that's because he's just bored out of his mind right now (laughs) to do with himself um, but he's, he's awesome around like just helping it's very equally balanced around here. That's awesome. I like that he was up late doing laundry. That's a lifesaver right there. Yes. So if you had one piece of advice to give to a new coach's wife or a future coach's wife, what would it be? Um, just be willing to, you know, go with the flow. Um, I got into this knowing that my life would be, you know, I wasn't going to grow up the way my parents did or not grow up, but I wasn't going to live my adulthood the way that I saw my parents, you know, where they lived in the same house, they've lived in the same house forever. And, you know, that we were going to move and, um, an example of that is we moved from um, Buffalo to Binghamton, and then um, six months later, we moved from Binghamton to Raleigh. <laughs> and, you know, it's just, yeah, you just kind of have to be willing to put your faith in something that's completely out of your control. Like, which is very hard for me. I am a self. I, I'm self-admitted. I'm a control freak. Um, so those kinds of things are not easy for me. But it's it's definitely something that has gotten easier as we've done it. Um, but yeah, just, just the ability to kind of be willing to put faith in some, in somebody and in an institution that, you know, you have no experience with yourself. Absolutely. I think that's a, a wonderful piece of advice. And I cannot imagine having to turn around and moved six months later after you just moved. That had to have been a little crazy. Um, it was nuts, actually. Um, so we moved to Binghamton, um, and Pat Papalizio was the head coach at Binghamton. And then um, that year, they had a phenomenal year. It was Nick Glazowski's freshman year. Um, and Pat got the job at NC State, and 
Um, we had bought a house, like, I don't know, three weeks before that, <laughs> like, oh. closed on it. And um, we closed on our house on these dates. I'm a numbers person, so I apologize. Yeah. No, um, you're good. We closed on our house on February 15th, and Frank started working at NC State on April 20th, I think. And then I sold oh. the house on June 30th. <laughs> so it was wow. um, wow. Yeah, so we didn't buy another house until we got here to Virginia because I was like, okay, no more, no more assistant coaches buying houses. Like we're not, we're done doing that. <laughs> yeah, um, but. Yeah, that was definitely crazy. We we had bought like a whole house of furniture, and um, I had call, I called, tried to call and cancel it, and I was like, "Can I? I don't want. I, I'm moving now." <laughs> and they're like, "Oh, sorry." But oh, whatever, it all worked cool. out. Yeah, definitely thankfully. for the best. Um, but yeah, it was that was a very chaotic point in our lives. Thankfully, well before we had children, because. <laughs> <laughs> right, I couldn't imagine having to deal with all that plus kids changing schools and getting no. unregistered and registered. So probably a, mm, yeah, a, no way. A blessing, right? <laughs> yes, I love it. Well, thank you so much, Lindsay. We appreciate you doing this with us. No, oh, thank you for having me. It was great. Thank you.